Hi, welcome to Unlock Layout and Design and today we are going to discuss about FinFET, basically its evolution. Let's look into the contents. Basically, we'll uh, see what is scaling, where we are. Then uh, we have some limitations in uh, deep submicron uh, technologies. So we'll look into that. Then uh, we'll discuss about VT, the threshold voltage and leakage in lower nodes. And what is the need for a new structure for MOSFET? Then we will introduce FinFET structure. Then we will discuss about some parameters like gain, FT, Fmax, noise, linearity of a FinFET. So then we will compare uh, the design and layout of a FinFET with respect to that of a planar uh, MOSFET. Then we will summarize. Let's try to understand where we stand in terms of scaling. That is, how small a transistor are we producing now? So, if this is taken from a reference, this is a blood cell uh, which is 7 micrometer and then a virus is 100 nanometer. The silicon atom itself is 0.24 nanometer. We are somewhere in between. So, contemporary FinFET technologies, they are in 16 nanometer. 5 nanometer and 3 nanometer. So we use MOSFET as a switch. So what is a switch? So when the switch is on, there should be full flow of current and when the switch is off, there should be no uh, flow of current. So how do we know that uh, a switch is on? So basically the current controlling uh, voltage is the VGS, what you can see here. This is the graph here. What you must see here is this orange line, okay, whatever orange or pink line. So here, say uh, this is the VGS here and suppose say this is the threshold voltage, say 0.4, right? So the moment VGS is greater than 0.4, the switch is on and full current should flow, say around milliamp of current is flowing. And once the VGS is lesser than uh, 0.4, the threshold voltage, then no current should flow. That is 10 to the power of minus 11 negligible current. So this is how we use a MOSFET. right? Now let us see uh, the issues uh, like, like the actual MOSFET how it behaves. right? So again we are looking into the same graph. I have removed that uh, orange line. So these are the sub uh, micron technologies. Uh, whatever we have. So this is the VGS. Say 0.4 is the threshold voltage. Above that you see the channel is conducting and current is flowing. And once it is lower than the threshold voltage, it is not becoming zero suddenly. Okay. Uh, so that is what is called as a gradual channel. So that's what you are seeing here. And this slope, right? So once the VGS uh, goes below uh, threshold voltage, there is still some sub-threshold conduction. Okay. So still it is conducting, it is not becoming suddenly zero. This slope is called as a sub-threshold slope. Okay. So this, if this is a vertical line, then the sub-threshold slope is very good. If it is a horizontal line, then it is very bad. That means like it is like a resistor, it is still conducting, right? When it should have been off below the threshold voltage, but it is still conducting, right? So it is very bad. So that's what happens in deep submicron technology. See here, these were okay, still okay, not that good, but still okay. But once it goes deep submicron, it becomes something like this. So it will never become zero and there is some leakage current. And these are like fu function of your channel length, right? So the threshold voltage, sub threshold slope, whatever we discussed here, uh, they are proportional to the LG, which is the gate length. Okay, so I of should be zero, but there is some conduction. That's what is this I of. So this ratio of I on to I off is important. If I of is zero, then this is infinite. This ratio is infinite. But because there is some subthreshold conduction, I of is not zero, and this ratio is a finite number, which is like bad. Okay, so I of is uh, lower, then this ratio is bigger. But because there is a finite value of I of, considerable amount of I of, then this ratio is smaller. So the switch, um, the metric for a switch is I on to I of ratio. That is very bad in deep submicron technologies. So how do we overcome this? 
so you, you in, increase the threshold voltage right so increase the threshold voltage then it becomes uh, like sudden the channel will become sudden or you increase the sub once you increase the supply uh, threshold voltage obviously your supply also should increase and obviously the power consumption also will uh, increase so basically it is a higher design cost and the very purpose of scaling is not uh, served what do you mean by scaling scaling means going down the technology right from one micrometer you go down to 0.18 then you go down to 0.13 then you go on go down to 0 0.09 0 0.04 like this so the very purpose of scaling is not uh, served let's discuss about vt threshold voltage and leakage in lower nodes as we see this is the gate drain and source separated by this gate oxide cg and uh, as and when the technology shrinks that is the lower sub, uh, uh, sub micron technologies or deep sub micron technologies this channel length is quite small so now what happens is gate tries to control this channel as well as the drain also influences this channel so that's what we call it as debil or drain induced barrier uh, lo lowering because of vds and also channel length modulation is also caused by this vds so basically this channel length modulation makes it kind of a resistor so basically the gate should control this channel and that's why what we can do is to bring the gate very close to the channel that way gate has a higher control over the channel that's what is done here so we have a thick thin gate oxide so that the gate has come very close to the channel and it has control over the channel now but then the drain to source there exists a leakage path away from the gate surface okay so making gate oxide thin still it will not help there exists uh, still a leakage path away from the gate which can't be controlled by the gate this is nothing but i off we've seen that i off should be almost zero so now this triggers uh, me to think that whether i need a new mosfet structure so we need a new structure and then what we have done here is a very thin uh, channel and the gate has been brought very close to the channel and then what we put is a buried oxide or box just below the source and drain above the substrate okay so now uh, the same thing is shown here also this is the gate very close to the channel drain and source and this is the box layer SiO2 whatever is there that is nothing but the silicon dioxide buried oxide layer now what this box does it cuts off this uh, the leakage path right from between the drain and source so it will cut it off so the purpose is served that way so this is a really thin channel in silicon this is on insulator to gain full control of the channel so that's why this new structure is called soi or silicon on insulator there is one uh, advantage while going to this uh, structure so this whatever diagram you are seeing here is the conventional uh, nmos and pmos this is the nmos and this is the pmos in a n well right so this is how uh, it is fabricated and what happens is there is a parasitic pnp and npn structures which come here and what they cause is a latch up okay especially in big transistors or buffers uh, so latch up is quite common so there is a separate video about latch up you can uh, refer to that but coming to this soi cmos now i have a buried oxide channel here which will prevent this parasitic npn and pnp structures hence it will become a latch up free operation so if you see here a pmos is formed by two p blocks in between a uh, n channel and then for a n mos so we have two uh, n plus blocks in between a p substrate uh, p substance right so this is the insulating substrate so in the exploration of uh, new structure uh, still the gate can't uh, control the channel completely so what uh, is done is a double gate structure so i have gate on top i have gate on bottom and in between i have drain and source and a channel right so this is what we do this is the same uh, front view of it drain source and gate on both the sides
right this is still a planar uh, construction top we have gate bottom we have gate and drain and source and this is the current direction here so as i said uh, this is uh, still a planar structure and trying to gain uh, control of the channel having gates on both sides so this uh, one structure wherein we have uh, top gate and bottom gate drain and source and this is the current direction so then what they did is uh, the fabrication of this is difficult because gate is on bottom so that's why they went with a vertical structure so wherein drain is at top source is at bottom current flows from drain to source in a vertical way and we have gate gates on both sides left and right side okay but this again fabrication is difficult because source is at the bottom so then finally they arrived at this structure wherein drain and source is this way current flows in this way and uh, gate is on both the sides so this way uh, the fabrication is easy and this is what they call it called it as fin so now the current direction is very similar to the planar one but the uh, it is still a vertical structure with a fin so this is kind of a fin fed structure finally we arrived at a fin fed uh, structure this is a fin gate 1 and gate 2 are the two side uh, gates which will control this uh, channel and drain and source uh, being this side right double gate structure but then they thought like why not we control the top surface as well and they wrapped around this uh, gate uh, on all three sides and that's why it is also called as tri gate fin fed or a vertical uh, structure or vertical channel or a 3d structure okay all these three mean fin fit only so you can see here this is the channel this is the drain and source and gate on all three sides right so you have multiple fins like this in order to carry more current you will have more fins right so this fin size would always be a constant only way to increase width is by adding more number of fins so in fin fed we have both the SOI fin fed as well as the bulk fin fed so if you see here this is the SOI fin fed you have gate wrapped around this uh, fin but you have box layer SIO2 here and in this the fin is still connected to the substrate and you have gate wrapped around it so this is the bulk fin fed <coughs> so what you see here is like you have uh, the fins these are the vertical ones they are the fins we have some terminologies known as the fin pitch so the distance between the fins it is called as the fin pitch and this is the fin height you can see here so whatever is uh, being exposed or whatever is covered by the gate uh, that is called as the fin height so in 22 nanometer we had uh, 34 nanometer of height these are some examples need not be uh, the same and uh, we also have like a higher uh, height in uh, lower technology nodes so this is just an example we can have something like this so here it, the pitch was 60 nanometer uh, here it is 42 nanometer basically the fins are closer okay and height is more so it has more uh, current capability okay and uh, here if you see in the layout view this is how is the fin pitch and this is the gate pitch you have multiple gates right so like how we have in the layout we have multiple gates here in between drain and source okay now we look into the intrinsic gain of the fin fit so what is this intrinsic gain intrinsic gain is the maximum gain uh, that can be provided by the MOSFET it is given by the equation GM into R0 or GM into 1 by GDS basically this is the GDS R0 and now we will compare the intrinsic gain of fin fit versus a planar MOSFET so we know that in MOSFET especially in the deep submicron operation so this channel length modulation and debil they are all like very bad so what does this uh, channel length modulation do it will reduce the r0 so we know that the gain is nothing but gm r0 the intrinsic gain and r0 decreases gm r0 will reduce whereas because of this fin fit because of their construction they have superior electrostatic integrity and higher carrier mobility so basically fin fit shows around 20 db more gain or a factor of 10 uh, more than the planar MOSFETs so that's what is shown here here you see the planar MOSFET 
uh, the gain uh, or the intrinsic gain and this is with that with that of the fin fit so there is something known as the ft f max and noise of fin fit so what is ft ft is the transition frequency or cutoff frequency and f max is the oscillation frequency or the self resonant frequency right so these two frequencies have to be higher in order to uh, use finfet in a high speed design okay. unfortunately finfet has a lower ft than planar bulk mosfet of a similar size so why is this lower because we have these fins right in between fin whatever is the distance it's called as the fin pitch so we reduce this fin pitch uh, at that time we have more parasitic capacitance and another one is the overlap capacitance between the gate and the channel or the drain and source so what you see in the red is the gate and what you see in the gray is the channel and we see a cgd and cgs on the other side which is a overlap gate to drain and gate to source capacitance so this will lower the ft and f max so how do we get rid of this so one way of uh, getting rid of this is to grow a epitaxial layer on the source and drain as shown in this figure so we see this red one over, over here is a epitaxial source and uh, epitaxial drain uh, which is grown over source and drain of the fin fed that way we can reduce the uh, ft and uh, we can increase the ft and f max so another one is the noise noise of the fin fed uh, especially the low frequency noise so this is a planar mo uh, mosfet uh, structure so you have a polysilicon gate and uh, sio2 gate oxide and then we see here uh, at the interface of the oxide and the channel we have dangling bonds see these dangling bonds actually give rise to the uh, low frequency noise which is nothing but the flicker noise whereas in case of fin fed what we have between the gate and the channel is a high k dielectric which is a very thin uh, high k dielectric instead of this sio2 so that's why we don't have these dangling bonds and that's why the flicker noise uh, is lesser in case of fin fed which is a very big Com compare the design and layout uh, of a fin fed versus a planar mosfet okay so suppose say this is the op amp uh, circuit similar op amp if you do it in a fin fed what you get is a higher open loop gain by around 20 db what you see here is a fin fed uh, which has a higher uh, gain here so around 20 db so if you see this around 50 db and this is around 70 db so it has a higher uh, gain loop gain and when we see the layout so this is the bulk uh, mosfet so we have source drain and source so these uh, these are like overlap of uh, drain here and similarly we can do here right so this is the gate two gates like here and drain is like overlapping and we have source and drain these are the fins okay layout is similar to that of conventional mosfet except that the channel width is context so this is the effective channel width right uh, so the, you have like the fins in between to summarize the comparison of uh, bulk mosfet and uh, fin fit so first thing is bulk mosfet is a planar construction whereas fin fit is a vertical uh, transistor or it is a three dimensional transistor or tri gate construction so all these three mean that it is a fin fit okay and uh, cannot control the channel in deep submicron that's a drawback in bulk mosfet so can control effectively the channel in deep submicron because uh, the the gate uh, wraps around the three sides it's a tri gate uh, architecture and uh, bulk mosfet if you see it is simple in structure whereas fin fit is complex in structure and the intrinsic gain is lesser in deep submicron almost it behaves a transistor behaves like a resistor whereas intrinsic gain is higher by 20 db compared to the mosfet uh, linearity is similar to that of a bulk mosfet and bulk mosfet if you see source drain overlap capacitance it is lesser so lower parasitics hence higher ft we di discussed about it but higher parasitics due to the higher overlap between gate source and uh, gate drain and hence lower ft overcome partially by the source drain epitaxial layer okay. flicker noise wise uh, it is higher in uh, bulk mosfet whereas in uh, fin fat it is lesser because of the high k dielectric so design and layout look similar if not exactly the same to that of a bulk CMOS layout is little complex compared to the uh, design These are the references hi thanks for watching this video please like share and subscribe 
so that it motivates me to make more videos.